In this lesson, we're learning how to describe our results in the laboratory. So at this point, we have uh, performed an experiment. We have results. What are the results like? Well, let's take a look by at, at this by uh, comparing this to a game that some people have played. And we're thinking of the game of darts. And so here we have someone who has thrown the dart at the dartboard, and that looks pretty good. In fact, that's about as good as you can get. Uh, in fact, we'd say that dart is right on the bullseye. And so if this is your result in a scientific experiment, you've gotten a result, and the result is right on what it's supposed to be, right on the correct answer, we call that accurate. Now, when we say accurate or accuracy, that's the closeness of our answer or our results to the right answer or the true correct answer. Accuracy is something we're always shooting for. Now, there's a little problem with this, though. Let's imagine that uh, this is the only time that dart player uh, throws a dart at that dartboard. Now, this person got, the, got an accurate result, but can we really have a lot of confidence in that dart player's ability? And the answer is not really, if we only have one uh, dart. If we really want to have confidence, in that dart player's ability, it might be better to see something like this. It's a slightly different game. We have an archer, and they've thrown, or they've uh, shot three arrows, and every one of those is right on the bullseye. Now, that type of result gives us more confidence in that player's ability. And so they're not just accurate, they're also close to each other. So that tells us that this person is able to repeat that excellent result over and over. And so we say that this archer is not just accurate, but also precise. Now, whereas accurate means you got the right answer, precise means that you're consistent. So precision is the consistency or the repeatability of our results. And when you see a scientist or someone who's, who's made a measurement or a series of measurements, and their answers are precise, they're, they're close to each other, it gives us a certain amount of confidence in the quality of those results. Now, this is the ideal circumstance. When you're doing work in the laboratory, this is what you want your results to look like. You want them to be right, and you want them to be close to each other. Unfortunately, that's not always what happens. Take a look at this dartboard here. Now, this person uh, who threw the darts, uh, would you say that they're precise? I believe they are. In fact, the results are very consistent. They're pretty close to each other. But would you say that the results are accurate? Are they on the bullseye? No, they're not, are they? So, you know, precision is a sign of, of good results, but it's not a guarantee, just like we have in this case. It's possible uh, to be precise, but, but not accurate, as we see in this case. Now, if this happens to you in the laboratory, or it happens to a scientist in the laboratory, you have good precision, but not very good accuracy, it usually means one of two things. Normally, it, it could mean that if you're doing something in the lab, you've made the same mistake over and over again. Maybe there's a step that you forgot to do. Maybe there's something else that you uh, didn't do, and uh, the same mistake gets uh, taken through the, lab, uh, through the results, and you get the same wrong answer or close to the same wrong answer over and over again. Or the second possibility is there may be some flaw inherent in your experiment. So that happens sometimes too. Let's take a look at uh, another example. This is something that occasionally happens. Now here we have a dart board and we have four darts and they're just all over the place. So would you call this accurate? No, and it's not they're not precise either. And so this is just something that you want to avoid. No, really, very low precision, very low accuracy. Now here's a special case. If you look at this dartboard, and this is not really a dartboard, this is just a picture, but we have five darts, and they're kind of all over the dartboard, but, you know, technically, if you average the five locations, you'll find that they actually do seem to average out to be pretty close to the bullseye. And so technically, we can say that this dart player is, is accurate for this uh, for this particular game of darts. But 
in all honesty, even though this person is accurate, would you really want this player on your team? Because, look, they're just all over the place. They never got on the bullseye. They were all around it. This is a case where the person is not precise, but technically they are accurate. And lack of precision indicates a lack of skill. And so this is also something that you want to avoid. By the way, if this ever happens to you that you know you're you have accurate an accurate average, but you're not precise, it's very unlikely. And it's also called I guess you could call that uh, getting lucky. Now let's try a few examples and see how these might appear on a test or a quiz. Here we have Albert who measures the length of a book three times and gets these results. And we have three values in centimeters. The actual length of the book is 39.72 centimeters. Are, Albert, are Albert's results precise and are they accurate? Well, if they're precise, we want to look at his results and just see if they're close to each other. And to me, it looks like they are very close to each other. The only variance you have is in that last digit by just a couple of places. Uh, the next to last digit, they're all the same. Uh, so yes, we can say that he is precise. But the question, is he accurate? Well, even though his answers are close to each other, he's still over a centimeter away. That's a pretty good percentage away from his uh, from the correct answer. So, no, he's not accurate. He's still fairly far off from the right answer. Now let's look at another example. Here we have Sandra, and she's taking a reading of a burette three times and gets these results. They're all in milliliters. And we know that the actual reading of the burette is 14.37 milliliters. So we have the same question. Is she precise? Notice that in her results, we don't just have variance in the last digit. We also have variance in the next to last digit. So that's a good sign that uh, she didn't really do a very precise job measuring. So no, she's not precise. Is she accurate? Well, she's not accurate either because look how far away, something like three milliliters away from the right answer. That's a pretty large percentage. So not accurate, not precise. Let's try another example. And here we have Ashley, and she measures the, uh, the mass of a pencil three times and gets three different results. And then the actual mass is 8.44 grams. So is she precise? Well, what do you think? It looks like the only variance is in the last uh, digit by just a very small amount. So yes, she's precise. In fact, those last two masses were right on, almost exactly uh, the same. And she's very close to the right answer. The, the right answer is right in, in between those, uh, those three values that she got. So that's definitely accurate. So accurate and precise. That's what we're trying to do in the laboratory. Let's try one more example before we stop. And this time we're asked to to take a reading of that burette in milliliters. Now, a burette is a device used to measure out a very specific, very precise amount of liquid or solution. And so, burettes are kind of unusual in that zero is at the top and not at the bottom, so we have to read this very carefully. Uh, we have 11 right here and 12 here, so the answer is in between 11 and 12. It's 11 point something. We know that. And we always read these burettes at the vertex, or in this case, the bottom of the meniscus. So there's like a uh, right there seems to be the bottom. So right there at that little shadow, let me see if I can make a mark there. All right. So anyway, we see that that is in between 11.4 and 11.5. So that means it's 11.4 something. And we also have to uh, estimate. Whenever you take a measurement in the lab, we always estimate between the lines in order to have a, a precise value. So to me, it looks like it's ha almost halfway between, maybe a little bit closer to that top line. So I'm going to estimate that as about 11.44 milliliters. So remember to estimate between the lines. Well, if you have 
uh, gotten through this exercise and through this lesson, hopefully at this point you understand the difference between accuracy and precision, and you know how to, to tell if results in the laboratory are accurate and or precise.